بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله القوي المتين All praise is due to Allah the most powerful the most strong القاهر الظاهر الملك الحق المبين the one who subdues the one who is most high the king and the truth nothing from the movement of the fetus escapes his sight to his majesty the most arrogant and most tyrant were humiliated and he decrees with his rulings the best and most perfect judgments we praise him the praise of the ones who are thankful and we ask him the help of the patients and I testify that there is no true God worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger who was given the victory in the battle of Badr by the descending angels sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa tabi'in lahum bi ihsan ila yawm al-din in this month the month of ramadan allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a clear and manifest victory in the battle of badr over the mushriks and he named this name Yawm al-Furqan the day of criterion and distinction between the truth and falsehood because he subhanahu wa ta'ala made this distinction very clear by the victory he gave to the messenger and the believers and the humiliation he put on the tyrants of the mushriks this took place in the month of Ramadan in the second year after Hijrah and the cause for this is that the news came to the Prophet ﷺ that Abu Sufyan from the top leaders of the Mushriks then was moving from greater Syria from the Bilad al-Sham to Mecca leading a caravan so the Prophet ﷺ called the companions so as to take over this caravan because the tribe of Quraysh was an enemy and at war with the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his companions and there was no covenant between them then and they drove them out from their homes and their property and they stood against the da'wah of the truth so they were deserving to what the Prophet ﷺ intended him and his companions aiming at their caravan so the Prophet ﷺ and the companions went out in about 300 to 317 men 
they had only two horses and seventy camels two or three men to ride alternatively from amongst them were seventy from the muhajirs, from the immigrants of the companions and the rest were from the ansar the helpers they intended the caravan and they didn't intend war but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had another plan in order to finish a matter already pre-decreed and to complete what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended and to make that and to make that manifested Abu Sufyan was alert he knew of the move of the Prophet والسلام, and his companions so he sent a caller to his people in Quraysh to communicate a message so as to send their help to protect the caravan and he redirected his route the common route that he used to take he redirected the main route and took by the seashore route by the Red Sea the message came the caller reached Mecca and called upon Quraysh that your caravan is being intercepted by Muhammad وسلم, and his companions so the Quraysh gathered and all of them came with their most notable of their leaders they moved having 1000 men 100 horses 700 camels as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described them Bataran wa ri'a an nasi wa yasudduna an sabilillahi wallahu bima ya'maluna muhit they brought with them singers singing defamatory and satiric poems Bataran wa ri'a an nasi wa yasudduna an sabilillahi Wallahu bima ya'maluna muhit and be not like those who come out of their homes boastfully and to be seen of men and hinder men from the path of Allah when Abu Sufyan knew of their departure from Mecca he sent them news that the caravan escaped the plot by Muhammad وسلم, and his companions and asking them to return and that there was no need for war they refused and Abu Jahl their tyrant the Mushrik swore that he will never return until he reached Badr settles there three days having a feast and festival eating and drinking alcoholic beverages and that we should impress the Arabs so that they continue to fear us the Prophet وسلم, when he knew of the 
a drive of Quraysh he gathered or called for a meeting to review and exchange and consult with his army leaders the Prophet ﷺ informed the companions of the gravity of the situation and asked them for advice and told them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised him one of the two parties either the caravan or the mushrik armies Abu Bakr was the first radiallahu ta'ala anhu who spoke and assured the Prophet ﷺ of the firm obedience to his command then Al-Miqdad ibn al-Aswad may Allah be pleased with him and he was from the Muhajirs from the immigrants and said Ya Rasul Allah O Messenger Allah O Messenger of Allah Imdhi lima amarak Allah Proceed where Allah directs you to Fawallahi la naqulu kama qalat banu Israel li Musa For we will be with you and we will not say as the children of Israel said to Musa As in Surah Al-Ma'idah 5.24 فذهب أنت وربك فقاتلا إنها هنا قاعدون So proceed and we will be with you for and we will not say as the children of Israel said to Musa as 5.24 فاذهب أنت وربك فقاتلا إنها هنا قاعدون Go you and your Lord and fight and we will stay here Rather we shall say to you Go you and your Lord and fight and we will fight along with you We will fight with you on your right To your left before you and from behind the Prophet ﷺ wanted also to hear the view of the helpers, Al-Ansar because they were the majority of the soldiers and were expected to shoulder the burden of the war activities so upon this Sa'd ibn Mu'ad al-Ansari, Sayyid al-Aws Sa'ad bin Mu'ad, the helper, the leader of the Aus tribe, stood up and said, By Allah, I feel you want us, meaning the helpers, to speak. The Prophet ﷺ said, Oh yes. Sa'ad said, O oh Messenger of Allah, we believe in you and we bear witness to that or to what you have granted to us. And we declare in clear terms that what you have brought is the truth. We give you our firm pledge of obedience and sacrifice. We will obey, we will obey you most willingly in whatever you command us. And by Allah who has sent you with the truth, if you were to ask us to throw ourselves into the sea, we will do that most readily and not a man of us will stay behind and we don't deny the idea of encounter with the enemy we are experienced in war and we are trustworthy in combat we hope that Allah will show you through our hands those deeds of bravery which will please your eyes 
kindly lead us to the battlefield in the name of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ was pleased and was impressed with this stance by the helpers and by the immigrants. Then he told them, Siru wa abshiru, for wallahi laka anni anzuru ila masari' al qawm. Move ahead and receive good news. For Allah has promised me one of the two, meaning the rewarding course through capturing the booty or strive in the cause of Allah against the mushriks. And by Allah, it is as if I now saw the enemy lying prostrate. So the Prophet ﷺ moved and took the position which is in the direction, close to the direction of Medina, from the side of Medina. And the mushriks took the other position from the side of Mecca. The same night, Allah, subh- Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent, sent the rain it rained on both sides for the mushriks the rain obstructed their progress while for the believers it was a great blessing Allah ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in surah al-anfal verse 11 إِذْ يُغَشِّيكُمُ النُّعَاسَ أَمَنَةً مِّنْهِ وَيُنَزِّلُ عَلَيْكُمْ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً لِيُطَهِّرَكُمْ بِهِ وَيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمْ رِجْسَ الشَّيْطَانِ وَلِيَرْبِطَ عَلَى قُلُوبِكُمْ وَيُثَبِّتَ بِهِ الْأَخْدَامِ And remember, when he covered you with the slumber and the security from him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he caused water to descend on you from the sky, to clean you thereby and to remove the rich, the whispering, evil suggestions of shaitan and to strengthen your hearts and make your feet firm thereby to the believers it cleaned them and removed them from the stain of shaitan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent rain to strengthen their hearts and to plant their feet firmly therewith to the mushriks it was an obstruction on mud Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pulled the sand firm under the feet of the believers with this rain and the believers built a trellis to the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam Arishan to be a headquarters for him and for the leaders and also a place providing protection for the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam also looking overlooking the battlefield he stepped out sallallahu alayhi wasallam planned the positions of his army walking through the place of the planned confrontation he moved there وَجَعَلَ يُشِيرُ بِيَدِهِ إِلَى مَصَارِعِ الْمُشْرِكِينَ pointing with his hand saying this is the position of so and so tomorrow if Allah wills and this is the position of so and so tomorrow if Allah wills meaning the position of those to be killed from the mushriks none of them after the battle except was in the same place where the Prophet ﷺ pointed to laying dead the Prophet ﷺ then spent the whole night in prayer near a tree and this was the night preceding Friday, Ramadan 17th 
like our night tonight the year 2 after Hijrah originally they left for the caravan on the 8th or the 12th when the two parties approached closer and closer and were visible to each other the Prophet وسلم, began supplicating Allah Allahumma hadihi Quraysh jāat bi fakhriha wa khuyalāiha wa khaylia tuhadduk wa tukadhibu rasulak O oh Allah this is Quraysh the proud and arrogant Quraishites already already here rebelling against you and belying your messenger Allahumma nasruk الذي وعدتني O oh Allah I am waiting for your victory which you have promised me Allahumma anjiz li ma wa'adtani O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfill that which you have promised me Allahumma inni unshiduk ahdak wa wa'adak O oh Allah I ask you for your covenant and your promise. Allahumma in shi'ta lam tu'bad. Allahumma in tahlik hadhihi al-isab al-yawm la tu'bad. Allah, if you will, you will not be worshipped. Allahumma in tahlik hadhihi al-isab al-yawm la tu'bad. If this community, the believers, to be destroyed today, you will not be worshipped and the believers sought the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called for that if you hear Rabbuk in the malaikat and I'm with you فثبت الذين آمن سألقي في قلوب الذين كفروا الرعب فاضربوا فوق الأعناق وَاضْرِبُوا مِنْهُمْ كُلَّ بَنَانٍ ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ شَاقُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْعِقَابِ ذَلِكُمْ فَذُوقُوهُ وَأَنَّ لِلْكَافِرِينَ عَذَابُ النَّارِ عَذَابَ النَّارِ Surah Al-Anfal uh, 12-14 Remember when your Lord inspired the angels Verily I am with you So keep firm those who have believed I will cast terror into the hearts of those who have disbelieved So strike them over the necks and smite over all their fingers and toes this is because they defied and disobeyed Allah and his messenger and whoever defies and disobeys Allah and his messenger then verily Allah is severe in punishment this is the torment so taste it and surely for the disbelievers is the torment of the fire ثُمَّ تَقَابَلَ الْجَمَعَانِ then the two parties met and the battle had actually started the Prophet وسلم, was in his, in his trellis and with him was Abu Bakr and Sa'ad bin Mu'ad guarding him the Prophet وسلم, used to invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the fierce engagement grew too hot he again began to supplicate Allah O oh Allah, should this group of Muslims be defeated today, you will no longer be worshipped. He continued to invoke Allah, stretching forth his hands and facing the Qibla, until his clock fell off his shoulders. Then Abu Bakr came to him, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Allah, may Allah be pleased with him, came to him, picked up the clock and put it back on his shoulders and said, Ya Rasulullah, you have cried out enough to your Lord. He will surely fulfill 
what he has promised you and immediately the response from Allah he sent down angels from the heavens for the help and assistance of the prophets and the believers and he inspired another message to the messenger saying إِذْ تَسْتَغِيثُونَ رَبَّكُمْ فَاسْتَجَابَ لَكُمْ أَنِّي مُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَلْفٍ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ مُرْدِفِينَ Remember when you sought help of your Lord and he answered you saying I will help you with a thousand of angels each behind the other following one another in succession Then the Prophet ﷺ and his trellis dozed off a little and then he raised his head calling loudly in joy Ya Abu Bakr O Abu Bakr glad tidings are there for you Allah's victory has approached by Allah I can see Jibreel on the mare in the thick of a sandstorm then he وسلم, came swiftly upon the ground reciting سَيُهْزَمُ الْجَمْعُ وَيُوَلُّونَ الدُّبُرُ Their multitude will be put to fight, to flight, and they will show their backs. He incited the believers to fight. And he said, Walladi nafsu Muhammadin biyadi. By the one in whose Muhammad's soul is in his hand. La yuqatilhum al-yawm rajul. No man shall find them today. Fayuqtalu sabiran muhtasiba and be killed perseverance in perseverance hoping for the reward from Allah going forward not backwards except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make him enter paradise the spirit he infused into the men was clearly witnessed فَقَامَ عُمَيْرُ بْنُ الْحِمَامِ عُمَيْرُ a lad of 16 from the helpers stood up and he had some dates he was eating and he said Ya Rasulullah you're talking about Jannah you're talking about the paradise the vastness of it the vastness of the heavens and the earth the Prophet ﷺ said yes he said بخن بخن يا رسول الله ما بيني وبين أن أدخل الجنة إلا أن يقتلني هؤلاء لئن حييت حتى آكل تمراتي هذه إنها لحياة طويلة ثم ألقى التمرات وقاتل حتى قتل رضي الله عنه إلاد 16 who flung away from dates and he was eating crying these dates are holding me back from paradise, the vastness of which is the heavens and the earth. So, saying he ran into the thick of the battle and died fighting bravely. At the instance of Jibreel alayhi salam, the Prophet ﷺ took a handful of gravel. فَرَمَا بِهَا الْقَوْمِ He cast it at the enemy and said confusion seized their faces as he flung the dust a violent sandstorm blew into the eyes of the enemies and they were busy with the dust in their eyes an ayah a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَلَمْ تَقْتُلُوهُمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ قَتَلَهُمْ وَمَا رَمَيْتَ إِذْ رَمَيْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ رَمَى وَلِيُبْلِيَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ مِنْهُ بَلَاءً حَسَنًا You killed them not but Allah killed them and you threw not when you threw when you did throw but Allah threw that he might test the believers by a fair trial from him verily Allah is healer, all healer, all knower 
a large number of the mushriks were killed and the others began to waver and the Muslims followed them they killed 70 of them and captured 70 from the top leaders of the mushriks who were killed then was Abu Jahl and Shayba bin Rabi'ah and his brother Utbah and his son Al-Walid bin Utbah the tyrants amongst the mushriks and in Sahih al-Bukhari from the way of Abdullah bin Mas'ud may Allah be pleased with him he said that the Prophet ﷺ directed his, himself towards the Kaaba and invoked Allah upon these four in particular. He said, Abdullah bin Mas'ud, فَأَشْهَدُ بِاللَّهِ I testify, I bear witness. By Allah, I saw them killed. The same people. The records of the hadiths speak clearly that the angels appeared on that day and fought on the sides of the Muslims Ibn Abbas may Allah be pleased with him and his father said while on that day a Muslim was chasing a disbeliever and he heard over him the swashing of a whip and the voice of the rider saying Go ahead, Haizum. He glanced at the mushrik who had now fallen down on his back. The Ansari, the helper, came to Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and related that event to him. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, You have told the truth. This was the help from the third heaven. And this is in Sahih Muslim. One of the helpers, one of the Ansar, captured Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib who said O Messenger of Allah by Allah this man didn't capture me I was captured by a man who was bold and had the most handsome face and who was riding a piebald horse I cannot see him here among the people the Ansari interrupted I captured him, O Messenger of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ replied, Be quiet. Allah, the Almighty, strengthened you with the help of a noble angel. The ranks of the Quraysh began to give away, and their numbers added nothing but confusion. And the Muslims followed eagerly their retreating steps, killing or taking captive all that fell within their reach. They turned into a shameful runaway and they flied in haste casting away their armor abandoned beasts of burden camp and equipment what about Abu Jahl Abu Jahl was deserted and left by himself on his horse waiting for death at the hand of two courageous lads of the Ansar Abdul Rahman bin Auf related the following story in this regard he said I was in the thick of the battle when two youth two youths still seemingly inexperienced in the art of fighting one on the right and the second on the left one of them spoke in a secret voice asking me to show him Abu Jahl I asked about his intention to which he replied that he had a strong desire to engage with him in combat until either of them was killed it was something incredible to me I turned left and the other said something to the same effect and showed a similar desire I responded to their intense desires and pointed directly at their target they both rushed swiftly towards the spot and without a moment's hesitation struck him simultaneously with their swords and finished him off 
they went back to Allah's messenger each claiming that he had killed Abu Jahl to the exclusion of the other the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked if they had whipped the blood of their swords and they answered that they had not he then examined both swords and assured them that they both had killed him when the battle concluded Abu Jahl's spoils were given to Mu'ad bin Amr bin al-Jamuh because the other Mu'ad bin al-Arf was later killed in the course of the same battle on the third day of the battle the Prophet ﷺ walked the place and he addressed those mushriks killed and said did you find what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised you to be the truth Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu told him O messenger of Allah ما تكلم من أجساد ولا لا أرواح لا أرواح لها you are addressing corpses without souls the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said والذي نفس محمد بيده ما أنتم بأسمع لما أقول منهم by the one in whose Muhammad's hand Muhammad's soul is in his hand you are hearing of what I am saying is not better than theirs and this is a moment that has to be explained clearly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who enabled them to hear this address of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and this was a particular moment and it is not to be taken as the innovators and the grave worshippers may misunderstand and abuse that they can call upon the dead and speak to them as the battle ended the Muslims began to hold some mushriks as we said in captivity and the Prophet ﷺ looked into the face of Sa'ad bin Mu'ad the head of the Prophet's guards and understood, understood that he was hateful to taking the enemy elements as prisoners so Sa'ad Sa'ad said that it was the first victory for the Muslims over the forces of the Mushriks and he had more liking for slaying them than sparing their lives Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu May Allah be pleased with him wanted to be wanted them to be finished he told the Prophet I see that you let us finish them off you allow Ali to take Uqail and you allow me to take such and such who was a relative of Umar for these are the tyrants of Kufr and their leaders Abu Bakr may Allah be pleased with him said they are our relatives our cousins I see that you take a ransom from them so that it will strengthen us against the Kafirs and so that may Allah guide them to Islam so the Prophet ﷺ took the ransom took by the ransom suggestion so as you see the prisoners, the prisoners of war constituted a problem and it awaited to be resolved and the consultation was the consultation was there, and the Prophet ﷺ took by the suggestion of Abu Bakr. When Abu Bakr explained, he said, "They are, after all, our relatives, and this money would give us strength against the disbelievers." 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could guide them to Islam. So uh, the Prophet ﷺ preferred Abu Bakr's suggestion to that of Umar's. The following day Umar visited the Prophet ﷺ and Abu Bakr and found them weeping. He showed extreme astonishment and inquired about the situation so that he might weep if it was worth weeping for Allah Akbar. Or else he would act as if weeping. The Prophet ﷺ said that a Quranic verse had been revealed rebuking them for taking ransom from the captives rather than slaying them. The ransom for the prisoners ranged between 4,000 and 1,000 dirhams in accordance with the captives' financial ability. Another form of ransom assumed an educational perspective. Most of the Meccans, unlike the Medanese, were literate and so each prisoner who could not afford the ransom was entrusted with ten children to teach them the art of writing and reading. Once the child had been proficient enough the instructor would be set free. Another clan of prisoners was released without ransom on grounds of their poor condition. Zainab, the daughter of the Prophet ﷺ, paid the ransom of her husband Abu al-As with a necklace. The Muslims released her prisoner and returned the necklace as a respect to the Prophet ﷺ, but on condition that Abu al-As would allow Zainab to migrate to Medina, which he actually did. And from them, there were those whom the Prophet ﷺ ordered to be killed because of their harm that they inflicted on the believers. And some he freed for a benefit when he saw there is a benefit for this. This is the Battle of Badr. A group of believers. In number, they are outnumbered but in belief and strength. They were established on the deen, fought to have Kalimatullah al uliya the testimony of La ilaha illallah, to be the prevailing one and to defend the deen. Allah gave them victory. For the Muslims to achieve victory, they have to يَقُومُ بِدِينِهِمْ Establish their deen so that Allah gives them the help and aid and to persevere and to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah the Most High to give victory to Islam and His and people who hold firm to the deen and to make us from the helpers of this deen and the callers to it and to give us steadfastness until we meet him subhanahu wa ta'ala wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam inshallah tomorrow we will discuss the battle of Badr from the Quranic perspective and the benefits deducted from them. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.